Anyway. Uh, So next up is uh, us proceeding to try to do some kind of really crazy testing on ROG Swift. Um, And some other G-Sync displays as as well. Um, So I, in my quest, if any of, of you have followed my quest to purchase an ROG Swift myself, since I didn't want to just steal the one from the office and put it on my desk at home, because uh, that would have been kind of poor taste, uh, I wanted to get one. So I kept kind of scoping sites out, and uh, I think it was a couple weeks back, my uh, pick of the week was that site that helps you find the stuff when it does come in stock, and I was uh, using that and pulled the trigger and ordered not one but two, because I pulled Orion, because that's the kind of thing he would do. Um, got them, uh, hooked it up, and... Uh, a buddy of mine did the same exact thing, same time as me, also ordered two uh, for he and his wife. And uh, before I even got to actually sit down and spend some time on mine, uh, he sends me some messages saying, hey, man, do you, does this thing flicker for you? And that seemed kind of weird that like he and his wife, like right off the bat, noticed uh, flickering. And they mainly play a bunch of MMO type games. Um, seems kind of weird. So I came into the office with some Radio Shack devices that I had purchased to uh, tape to the front of our g-sync panels here and try to do some testing and see if we can recreate this kind of flickering um which i noticed as well as soon as i actually sat down with mine and and played any kind of game that does what i'm what i'm calling just like a stall so in other words uh you have any kind of a game it's doing a loading screen or maybe it dynamically loads game content um and if you had a regular display the worst that would happen is the scene might just freeze temporarily you know you might have a couple of uh what would look like just dropped frames on video uh so people might not really notice it that much um if it's a static loading screen you wouldn't normally have seen it uh because nothing is moving on that screen but in the case of g-sync panels when the uh game does that kind of a stall it actually has a artifact or an effect or whatever it is you'd like to call it that is actually visible um and depending on how sensitive you are to it, it might kind of smack you in the face. It depends exactly on like what kind of game and what frame rate it's running at before that stall happens, like before and after. Uh, there's a lot of variables that affect it, but uh, we have a picture here in the piece that I wrote up that's pretty much the worst case. Um, and just to kind of talk through the picture here, there is a section at the left side where you are actually seeing what looks like a ripple, if you're kind of a techie electronics guy. And what this graph is plotting is the brightness of a small section of the display. Okay, so we had some gear hooked up in the office here, and we were measuring in brightness coming off of the panel while we had a scene in the game actually being shown on the panel, right? And these very small and close together ripples, actually I could zoom this in a little bit. These very small close together ripples on the left here is actually 144 hertz refresh. So... The reason that there is a ripple is not because the backlight is necessarily changing, because our ROG Swifts actually have very good backlights. They're current regulated, and it's basically just a perfect, pure, you know, brightness. That brightness never changes. Uh, but what the apparent brightness change is, is that between refreshes, the very fast responding pixels of a panel like an ROG Swift are actually bleed back to white during the pause between the uh, screen refresh. So in other words, the screen is refreshing and being drawn from top to bottom. There's a period of time where some of those pixels are basically just waiting to be refreshed again, and they start going white. Uh, You just don't normally notice this because it happens so fast, right? Um, Some people might be asking, well, wait, I had like 60 hertz panels in the fast. I would have seen it on that, surely. No, because those pixels were not designed to be super low latency. Uh, so that panel would have just had more of a persistence to it, and those pixels would take longer to bleed to white. So this is really just kind of a the law of physics kind of thing, right? If you're going to engineer something to respond faster, it's going to also respond faster when it's not being refreshed and kind of go back to its natural state. Um, so going back to this picture here, uh, what you see here, this spike up, and then it kind of goes back to 144, and then another spike up, is the effect of this particular game completely stalling the graphics driver. In other words, the game just like stops giving the the driver and the GPU anything to go on. So the end result with G-Sync enabled is that nothing goes to the panel for that period of time, right? There's no frames to 
update the panel. Um, so the spikes that you see here that are very much more spread out than what's on the left side is actually 30 hertz for fresh. And that is a forced refresh that the G-Sync module just does on its own uh, in the absence of anything else to go on, right? So, uh, and as you can tell just by looking overall at this graph, you know, let me go back to the zoomed out version, uh, since this is intensity, light intensity over time, you might actually notice something like that if you're kind of sensitive to changes in brightness uh, of a display. Um, so you'll notice, you know, at 144, the intensity on average is much lower than when it drops down to 30 hertz refresh. And then you notice it kind of pretty quickly drops back down to a lower intensity once you get back to 144. Um, and what we noticed in, in generally in these panels is that the lower the refresh rate was, and by refresh, I mean the screen refresh, um, not the rate, not necessarily the rate that the game is outputting, um, at lower values, that of uh, that change between uh, the change in intensity between your when you're stuck at that force refresh and when you're doing the normal refreshing uh, is much less. So basically, the higher you're refreshing, the bigger the effect, right? And if you were at in in playing some uh, MMO, for example, most MMOs, I would say probably most MMOs, not necessarily taxing on something like a GTX 980. If you happen to have that in your system, uh, chances are you're riding that cap, that very high end cap, and then uh, when the game does some kind of background loading, it really is a very big change going from 144 to 30 and then back to 144. So there was a statement from NVIDIA that we got. We were actually working with back and forth with NVIDIA all during, uh, during the research and uh, kind of uh, probing around for this piece. Um, and here is a NVIDIA statement. All LCD pixel values relax after refreshing. As a result, the brightness value that is set during a LCD scan line update slowly relaxes until the next refresh. This means all LCDs have some slight variation in brightness. In this case, lower frequency refreshes will appear slightly brighter than higher frequency refreshes by 1 or 2%. And actually, that 1 or 2% is about the amount that we saw. Um, when games are running normally, i.e. not waiting on a load screen or a screen capture, Users will never see this slight variation in brightness value. In the rare cases where frame rates can plummet to very low levels, there's very slight brightness variation, which is barely perceptible to the human eye, which disappears when normal operation resumes. So that's their quote. Um, and I will say that uh, Ryan, when he initially tested all of these G-Sync panels and he ran the typical games that we run for uh, GPU testing and, and whatnot, those games actually, it's really hard to see that kind of a flicker. Um, Especially uh, if the game just dips down slowly to a very low refresh rate, even refresh rates lower than 30, uh, the G-Sync panels don't do this. It is just, if it has a some rate of frames coming in, uh, even down to a couple of frames per second, it's not going to go into such a, you know, smack you in the face uh, case like this. You just won't notice it. Uh, we actually had all the same gear hooked up in games like Assassin's Creed or... Um, couple other ones where Ryan just cranked up everything. We found our slowest, oldest GPU that can handle G-Sync monitor, uh, plugged it into a system, and then cranked everything on, like, the most torturous games we could come across. And we can get the frame rate all the way down to one. Uh, and there was no flicker. It's only when there's a complete stall in this kind of a case. So uh, in our experience, that tends to happen a little more often in MMOs. Actually, the commenters uh, for this article were saying the same kind of thing. A lot of people were saying what games they saw it happen in. It was an MMO type game where you were going from a really high frame rate to a really low frame rate. A um, couple other places we saw it, uh, Ryan saw it in uh, the load screen for Portal, which is a kind of a quasi dynamic loading thing, right? You, you can st you still have control within the game. It's like when you're in the elevator going to the next level, that sort of thing. Uh, and it actually goes the game that game actually goes a few levels in before it does that first actual load during one of those transitions, and we were able to see it immediately on that but for me now that i've researched this like this is normally the kind of thing I'm, I'm really picky on displays doing anything out of the ordinary but now that i've researched it and i know what it is it actually doesn't bother me at all anymore because i just know that all right well the game's loading something now the screen might just look a little bit brighter while it's doing that um and wait a few more years and your eyes won't even be able to tell yeah probably i don't know i hope my eyes stay good for uh, at least a few more years before they go to crap. But um, 
so the the basically the primary reason we wrote this up was just so that um, there was something for people to point to, right? Because I I didn't see anything else out there. Nobody really doing any kind of actual analysis. There were forum posts about people that were saying, "Hey, I saw flickering in this, and I didn't see it in that, and I changed some setting, and then it went away." But it was really, in reality, it was probably just they were it was bordering on perception in the first place right and then they changed something but the thing they changed really wouldn't have had an effect on it and so it was probably still there they just i don't know kind of a psychology thing i guess or a perception thing whatever you want to call it but at least now there's something there and we actually have a researched and kind of sort of developed a way of testing this so that when freesync finally comes along we can test that too and see how that handles lower refresh rates and uh, if a game happens to stall and that sort of thing. So, or if they could feed their pixels volume so they'd relax better. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what we need here. Th- th- I mean, that's what we're looking at. So, yeah, I did I did find it interesting because uh, we, we did look at some other panels like non GSIG panels or GSIG panels just running at a fixed refresh rate, and I found it surprising that they actually do do that there is a continuous flicker going on it's just too fast for you to perceive right um and we even uh in doing some other testing like a typical uh 60 hertz lcds uh newer ones actually are like redrawing to the screen at 120 uh it's just the only reason that they couldn't be 120 hertz panels is because the interface it just that circuitry can't handle anything higher than 60 um so that's uh, refreshing faster is actually what gives you, you know, less ghosting and other things are, are you know, much better on the panel. So that's why uh, my theory on why all of a sudden, now that this, uh, you know, newer DisplayPort interface standards were out, and now that you can actually pump more bandwidth uh, into the panel, uh, I think that's why all of a sudden all the panels are just going 120 hertz, 144 hertz, um, you know, pretty quickly. It's because the panel technology was kind of sort of already there. Right. Um, conversation I had with Ken the other day was that like, uh, you know, big screen televisions, they natively go 120, most of them. Um, and some of them go even higher than that. Right. When they do that really smooth motion effect that they can do. Uh, the 240 due to the backlight flashing thing that they do. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. that, all that stuff. Um, it's just that the panels themselves, even very large <clears throat> panels have natively been able to do this for a while we just needed a better interface so there you have it uh hopefully there's some pictures now for people to point to instead of just trying to describe uh you know using i think i see flicker words uh and stuff like that and there might actually be follow-ons to this just you know we'll probably do some more testing and see how different panels respond and i I imagine we'll have uh another piece written up uh, somewhere down the road about this kind of topic any comments on this guy from anybody? Josh? Terrible work. I oh. hated it. Awesome. I read it three times. It's awful. <laughs> so you were the three reads. Yes. I see. <laughs> I even watched the video if you embedded one. There wasn't one. That goes to show Damn. you. Yeah. <laughs> now you know he wasn't reading. Now I know. I know he didn't read it. You know what yeah, this really tells us? It tells us that... that gra- Graphical interfaces, what we have with whether they're CRTs, LCDs, there's got to be better ways to be doing this. There actually is. But, it's, it's OLED. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, because they're they're emitting their but own light. what and, price? Yeah. yeah, I mean, OLED is be very pricey, but... I'm like, not holding my breath. Yeah, and I'm not holding my breath either. Um, I'm especially not holding my breath for very uh, fast refresh rate OLED. Um, cause now you're just really asking for it. Right. But, um, OLED, those pixels, I'm, I'm pretty sure on this, they, they, they maintain exactly whatever persistence you instruct them to maintain and they just hold it. Um, so you could in theory refresh an OLED display at one FPS, like one refresh per second. Yeah. And, you know, it would or be just the fine. poorly named, uh, quantum dots that they're thinking about using for the next generation of panels. Those should be able to change wag of length almost instantaneously. Yep. And they should hold it, I think. Yeah. It all depends on if there is an individual circuit attached to each pixel, or I should say each sub-pixel. Yeah. It's just to, to freeze that value in. It's almost well, like a display. that's the same thing with uh, the, the you know, current LCDs, except you've got the liquid crystal that 
once you remove the charge or it's not refreshed, it just slowly goes back to its natural position. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, if you've ever uh, changed a watch battery in an old LCD watch and looked at the face of it after you pulled the battery out, like you can actually see whatever segments were lit up. They slowly fade out to nothing. Ah, uh, melting. Melting. That's, that's exactly what these panels are doing, but they do it yep. much faster because they're, those pixels are supposed to be much faster responding than the segments in, an, in a watch, right? You can actually watch those things come in and out. They're such slow response time. Well, yeah, and then partly that's also because the same thing with CRTs with uh, the phosphor persistence. Uh, you had the bigger, fatter phosphors in the large TVs that were still only doing 640 by 480 at max, and the persistence was really long. And so you would interleave, you know, at, at 30 hertz, well, 60 hertz, but 30 hertz, interleave, whatever. And uh, you wouldn't notice flashing, but you get a, uh, a computer CRT monitor that has much finer, finer phosphors that do not persist nearly as long until you get the nice flashing and and i think a lot of the same thing is with current lcds and and how you know they 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 twist and uh you know either cover up or or let go of the light so it's kind of interesting that that we have a lot of the same mechanisms even though the physics behind phosphors and and uh liquid crystal displays are, are totally different but the effect is very similar yeah yeah, ends up being very similar. Except instead of going out, fading out to black, they actually... They get really and, bright! Yeah, all you see is the backlight. <laughs> it's actually what you're seeing. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's another little known fact, right? If you look at a black screen on an LCD, the, the panel is actually consuming more power because it has to turn on everything yeah. to block out the backlight. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, 